Humans have developed an obsession with the extinct species, much like the dodo or the thylacine, or the woolly mammoths, focusing on ways to bring them back. The de-extinction field is a recent development that is just as contentious as it is fresh. While proponents argue that it is our responsibility to reintroduce them to the wild, skeptics question whether modern ecosystems could support ancient species. Shouldn't we give the existing species more priority since there is so little money available for conservation? Or may an all-encompassing strategy include de-extinction as one of the opinions? That aside, let's take a look at what the scientists have in store for us, from the Tasmanian tiger to the oldest creatures to have ever walked the earth. Here are 20 extinct animals scientists are going to revive. Number 20. The Woolly Mammoth we all remember Manny from Ice Age Adventures, right? Won't it be nice to have a similar creature walking the earth again? Anyways, the woolly mammoth was selected as an animal to be revived because scientists felt it would be easier. But why is that? Well, their very close relative, the Asian elephant, is still living. And given the similarity of their genomes, it would make it easy to edit the genes of a woolly mammoth into that of an Asian elephant. It kinda sounds pretty easy and all mad science stuff, but it's not. The true account of geneticist George M. Church, a lab rat turned cultural icon, and his group of bright young Harvard researchers who are working to save the woolly mammoth from the extinction is told in the documentary Woolly. George Church, a genetics professor at Harvard University, known for his groundbreaking work in genome sequencing and gene splicing, is flush with $15 million in new investment and believes the company may usher in a time when mammoths walk the Arctic tundra again. He and other scientists are also optimistic that a restored species can contribute to the fight against climate change, and with this opening, we should be convinced that there is a lot we need to know about the dead animals scientists are close to reviving. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. That takes us to today's strange topic. When we hear the word Thunderbird, we think Thunderbird in the history and culture of some indigenous peoples of North America, where the Thunderbird is believed to be a mythological monster and is regarded as a powerful supernatural figure. But there's no way that it didn't come from a source of inspiration or an actual bird that was dubbed by that name. Back on April 26, 1890, the Tombstone Epitaph published an incredible article about gunslingers shooting the Tombstone Thunderbird right out of the sky. And 126 years later, the legend lives on. This happens to be the most popular theory of a picture existing. It looks like a pterodactyl-like creature spread out on barn wingspan, about 18 feet, and it had cowboys holding hands, stretching their arms out to depict the actual size of the creature as it was spread. Notice how similar it looks to the Thunderbird, and this is yet the only proof of this mythical creature, and scientists are actually trying to believe that the legendary Thunderbird did roam the earth. Let us know what you think about this with the hashtag strange topic in the comment section. With that said, let's move on. Number 19. Tasmanian Tiger Using gene editing technology, scientists in the US and Australia have started a $15 million experiment to bring back the Tasmanian tiger, a mammal that became extinct in the 1930s. The project will be carried out with the assistance of the Tasmanian Tiger Integrated Genetic Restoration Research Lab at the University of Melbourne, according to the announcement made by Texas-based Colossal Biosciences. The organization also responsible for the Woolly Mammoth Resurrection Project announced last year. Many people support the plan, including colossal investor and actor Chris Hemsworth. Interestingly, this isn't the first time these tigers have been tried to be revived. Dr. Michael Archer, an Australian scientist, tried unsuccessfully in 1999 to clone the animal from a perfectly preserved specimen in a museum in order to bring it back to life. What precisely are Tasmanian tigers? A marsupial mammal that rears young in a pouch? The Tasmanian tiger is the only member of Thylacinidae family to have survived in the modern era. Although the species back stripes gave it the nickname Tasmanian Tiger, it was actually a slow-moving carnivore that often hunted alone or in pairs at night. The species, which had sharp claws and a dog-like skull, consumed small rodents, birds, kangaroos, and other marsupials. Number 18. The Dodo 
After years of analysis of the bird's preserved DNA, scientists have now been able to sequence its whole genome. It won't be simple to transform the sample into a living mammal, despite the fact that they were able to collect it from a wonderful specimen in Denmark. Humans' destruction of the bird and the cats, dogs, and pigs that sailors who were exploring the Indian Ocean introduced to the island contributed to its extinction. Before being discovered, the dodo had survived on the island for hundreds of years. Isolation had rendered it unafraid of people and other animals, making it easy to prey. The bird was seen for the first time in 1598, and it was last seen in 1662, a mere 64 years later. There are now renewed expectations that it may return. The professor claimed that in order to restore birds over mammals, a different strategy was required and that this would be the toughest challenge. We don't worry about this turning into a Jurassic Park-style scenario because dodos were rather harmless critters. Number 17. Passenger Pigeon a team of scientists in Sausalito, California, is striving to genetically relive the passenger pigeon as part of a bigger initiative to increase biodiversity by using cutting-edge methods to save both extinct and endangered species. No need to worry about Jurassic Park-style monster passenger pigeons ever populating the world. The current de-extinction initiatives don't actually reconstruct the bird's full DNA. As an alternative, researchers first decode DNA from extinct passenger pigeons and then use biotechnology to modify the DNA of current band-tailed pigeons so that it matches the passenger pigeon's genome. Scientists hope that by altering enough of the genetic code and utilizing tried-and-true conservation techniques, the birds will resemble and behave like their extinct ancestors. According to sources, a new passenger pigeon might be prepared for flight within the next 7 to 10 years. Number 16. The Pyrenean Ibex Nine years ago, the last Pyrenean ibex perished from loneliness in a falling tree. However, the extinct species may have recently been brought back to life by cloning for a fleeting seven-minute period. Scientists claim to have successfully implanted embryos into domestic goats as hosts and brought a cloned Pyrenean ibex to term. However, it succumbed to serious lung abnormalities after only seven minutes. According to the Daily Telegraph, other cloned animals, including sheep, have been born with identical lung problems. Dolly the sheep passed away from a lung infection. However, it's possible that her being a clone had nothing to do with it. According to project director Jose Folch, the delivered baby was genetically identical to the exact Pyrenean ibex, with assistance from colleagues at the National Research Institute of Agriculture and Food. Folch of Spain's Center of Food Technology and Research of Aragon spearheaded the cloning attempt, which was the first successful cloning of an extinct creature outside the Jurassic Park. They implanted embryos into 57 surrogate goats after extracting DNA using a process known as nuclear transfer. One live birth and seven pregnancies were the end result, as they might be helpful for future cloning based conservation. Our current study recommends properly keeping tissues and cells of any endangered species or compatible animals, according to Fulch. Number 15. The Heath Hen. The absence of cutting-edge reproductive methods that are compatible with the particular reproductive biology of birds is a bottleneck for all avian genetic rescue initiatives. With the Heath Hen De-Extinction Project, we are attempting to build the fundamental knowledge needed to bring the extinct Heath Hen species and all other avian species back to life. The creation of these tools may contribute to improved genetic variety, increased disease resistance, the creation of synthetic substitutes, and facilitated climactic adaptation. The researchers intend to start cloning attempts by 2018 despite the fact that bringing back a species that has been extinct for thousands of years won't be an easy task. A smaller, less famous, and more recently extinct candidate has frequently emerged in the past year and it may surpass the mammoth as the first extinct creature to be brought back to life. The project, like the idea of de-extinction in general, has been the subject of controversy for decades. The Martha's Vineyard Heath Hen, a near relative of the bigger prairie chicken, was previously widespread along the east coast of the United States. However, by the end of the 19th century, it was restricted to the island. The sand plains where the bird originally roamed are still present, offering it a viable home to return to, even though hunting was the primary cause of its collapse. Number 14. Sabertooth Tiger who wants to live alongside saber-toothed tigers? Imagine a successful woolly mammoth regeneration alongside a saber-toothed tiger. Now all that's left is a sloth to finish up the Ice Age adventures. 
Of course, it would be nothing without Ellie and the Possum Brothers, but we'll get there. Moving on. Nowadays, the extinction, or the scientific method of reviving extinct species through cloning their DNA, is a hot topic. Sabertooths are one of the species listed because of their fossils, actually contain some DNA, and the last sabertooth species to go extinct did so only 10,000 years ago. Does that imply that we will soon witness a sabertooth in the wild? Given the approach, I seriously doubt it, and even if a sabertooth is ever resurrected, there will always be questions about how closely it resembles the real animal. Number 13. The Carolina Parakeet Researchers have found evidence that the Carolina Parakeet suffered a serious injustice. The brilliant green birds previously thrived between the east coast of the United States and what is now Colorado. They have yellow heads and red faces. The BBC claims that for thousands of years, the birds lived in wetlands and old growth forests. By 1918, the Cincinnati Zoo was the home of the final Carolina parakeet. It passed away that year on February 21st. Today, all that's left of one of the few native parrots in North America are taxidermied specimens and book plates from bygone era of publishing. Modern DNA testing, however, shows that inbreeding or predators were not the cause of the bird's demise, it was just human error. Despite the fact that they have been absent for more than a century, the research carried out by scientists at the University of Barcelona has created the possibility of their return. That's it, the extinction. The sun parakeet's DNA may be examined by researchers and modified to produce offspring that are Carolina parakeets. The tiny threads that make up life would need to have hundreds of protein codes edited, according to La Lueza Fox. Although raising the bird from the dead won't be simple, scientists from all around the world are paying attention to the attempt. However, it's thought that by reintroducing extinct DNA to close relatives in the precise settings where they originally existed, it may be feasible to restore the wild populations of birds. Number 12. Aurochs To engineer and rewild our landscapes, aurochs, the extinct predecessor of modern cattle, are being brought back to life. Over the course of two million years, this ancient mega-cow wandered through Europe, Asia, and North Africa, influencing ecosystems. According to ecologists, the resurgence is absolutely necessary to preserve biodiversity in some eras of Europe. According to Julius Caesar, the Arok was the heaviest terrestrial creature on the continent and was little below the elephant in size. In addition to historical stories, we can draw information about Arokes from a wide variety of sources, including archaeology and cattle genetics. Bulls were noticeably larger than cows, with average heights between 1.55 and 1.80 centimeters, and weights of up to 1,000 kilograms, cows 135 to 155 centimeters. They possessed lengthy legs made for extended walks and a light-colored snout, nose, mouth, and jaws. When you look at an auroch in the eye, you are immediately struck by its impressively big skull and long, thick, and curved horns, which may reach lengths of up to 107 centimeters and 18 centimeters. Despite their size, aurochs were nimble, athletic creatures capable of protecting themselves from wolves and other predators. Sadly, the aurochs experienced the same pattern of negative human effects. By the 13th century, overhunting, disease spread by domesticated animals, and habitat degradation had already caused the species to decrease. They were crucial to the development of our species, so why are we attempting to bring back aurochs when contemporary cattle can meet our agricultural needs? And what are the dangers that go along with the risks of their de-extinction. Number 11. The Moa The idea of de-extinction has captured our imagination ever since Jurassic Park brought dinosaurs back, but science hasn't caught up to the hype. Although certain animals have been cloned and DNA has been moved about in the lab, no species has yet been resurrected by geneticists. All of an extinct animal's DNA, a method of putting that DNA into a living egg, and a mother for the egg that might incubate or carry it to term are the minimum three requirements for bringing the species back to life. The first almost complete genome of the flightless bird known as the small bush moa, which became extinct shortly after Polynesians arrived in New Zealand in the late 13th century, has been assembled by researchers at Harvard University. The accomplishment brings the field of extinct genomes one step closer to the objective of de-extinction, which entails reviving extinct species by inserting their genome into an egg of a living species. That could call for a little more genetic fiddling and a lot of egg for the moa, whose DNA was reassembled from the toe bone of a museum specimen. The six inch long one pound fish that emos lay may be perfect solution. 
Number 10. The Irish Elk As cloning technology develops, scientists think that some extinct creatures like the Irish Elk once memorialized in a poem by Seamus Haney may once again roam the planet. Even while the science of cloning is still in its infancy, many scientists today concur that it will soon be a practical alternative. The Irish Elk was another megafauna that perished as an ice period ended. It's incorrect to refer to this animal as an elk because current DNA research has revealed that it was actually the biggest deer to have ever lived, according to the website. Its antlers alone were as wide as 12 feet. The Irish elk is an excellent candidate for cloning because, like other creatures that lived in the frigid north during the Pleistocene, preserved specimens can be easily discovered in thawing permafrost. The enormous antlers on the skulls are frequently displayed on the walls of castles and hunting lodges. The fact that there are numerous well-preserved fossils of this magnificent, seven-foot-tall species all throughout the planet makes it a logical choice for scientists conducting cloning experiments. The Irish elk, with its arresting size and distinctive look, is of considerable relevance to paleontologists because of the way in which the species has become entangled in evolutionary discussions down through the years, according to the University of California Museum of Paleontology. Number 9. The Great Auk before we begin, let's get to know what great is. From the looks of things, you can already guess that it's a penguin-like bird, right? Well, that's basically what it is. But to get more about the great auk, these birds are part of the species of flightless birds that become extinct in the mid-19th century, thanks to several crews of men that devoted their lives to destroying these birds. But such is life for the great auk, a bygone species that were last seen alive in 1852. We gradually came to terms with the fact that we would never know for sure how the bird acted and survived, even though bones, drawings, and historical data give a vivid picture of what it looked like. But thankfully, this might not be the end for these birds since a group of scientists has plans to resurrect the species using genetic information extracted from fossils. The team thinks it can reintroduce the species by editing the bird's DNA into its nearest surviving relative, the razor-billed auk. Species may either fail to flourish or flourish in ways that humans consider offensive. You get a zero-sum or even negative-sum game if you bring back a species that kills another. Even so, can we really be certain that history won't repeat itself in a world with great ox? It might not be fair to push a species towards another global extinction. At the very least, it's a good thing to know that a backup strategy is being developed. Number 8. The Neanderthals For those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, Neanderthals are extinct human species with a pronounced brow ridge and receding forehead that lived in large numbers in ice period age Europe between 120,000 and 35,000 years ago. The middle Paleolithic Mousterian flint industry was connected to the Neanderthals. The question is, do you really think it's possible to recreate such a species of human? The answer to that would be just barely. If we really wanted to, we could almost exactly replicate a Neanderthal, but it would likely take a lot of time and effort. You might believe that resurrecting a Neanderthal shouldn't be too difficult given that we are familiar with their DNA. Since we are aware of Neanderthal DNA, we are also aware of all the necessary steps to create a Neanderthal. Unfortunately, we are missing the DNA that would be found inside a living cell, and if we want to have Neanderthals on Earth once more, we need that. A readout of Neanderthal's DNA is equivalent to millions of sheets of paper and hundreds of millions of lines of computer code. That is not exactly useful if you ask me. For the code to function, a computer is required. It holds true for Neanderthal DNA as well. However, Neanderthal DNA's instructions must be entered into a cell rather than a computer. Sadly, scientists are unable to simply type the DNA code into a cell. But it's not just what you see, and it's harder than that. There are a couple of ways we could get the DNA into a cell. Number 7. The Quagga Quaggas are simply an extinct species of zebras from 150 years ago. But thanks to scientists, the once extinct species of zebra which misses stripes on the back half of its body is making a comeback. And this was made possible due to 30 years of selective breeding by volunteer farmers using zebras that had fewer stripes. In 1880, the last wild quagga was discovered. German researchers had hypothesized in the 1960s that the extinct quagga with brown stripes and plain rumps was not a distinct zebra species but rather a virtual zebra species. 
Reinhold Rau proposed in 1972 to use zebras with lighter rumps and selective breeding to bring back the quagga in South Africa. His suggestion was not well received. He was only able to demonstrate his hypothesis that the quagga was not a distinct species after having dyed tissue samples from a stuffed quagga transported to California in 1980. Up until his passing, Rao devoted his life to returning the quagga to South Africa. In 1988, the first foal for the Quagga project was born, and today in South Africa, there are currently 143 Quagga-like zebras with 1,300 zebras having been born there during the past 30 years. The fifth generation zebra from this study, known as Rao Quaggas in honor of Rao, has five extremely Quagga-like species. On the Cape Town side of Devil's Peak, one of these Kumba may be observed. Number 6. The Stellar's Sea Cow a multinational team of researchers was said to have successfully sequenced and analyzed the genome of Stellar's sea cow. Their findings depict that this huge aquatic mammal clearly started on the path to extinction long before the first Paleolithic hunters and gatherers made their way into the Beringa, which is thought to have happened at least 25,000 to 30,000 years ago. The Stellar's sea cow is now an extinct species of marine mammal from the older Serenia which has three live manatee species and the dugong which prior research has revealed to be stellar sea cow's closest relative. During the Pleistocene and Holocene epochs, it's lived in the coastal regions of the North Pacific Ocean, including the Bering Sea. By the end of the 18th century, stellar sea cow was extinct. The last population was found by Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition in 1741 around the beaches of the Commander's Islands. The stellar sea cow could weigh up to 11 tons and measure up to 10 meters, but adult animals from the last group were only around half that size. The nuclear and mitogenomes of the stellar sea cow have been determined to comprise, respectively, 1.24 billion and 16,896 base pairs. According to their investigation, the gene diversity of the last stellar sea cow population was low and was comparable to that of the last woolly mammoth population that lived in Wrangell Island 4,000 years ago. Number 5. The White Rhinoceros the northern white rhino's situation appears hopeless and many have already declared the species extinct. However, some scientists aren't quite ready to surrender just yet. These researchers intend to employ in vitro fertilization IVF, to create their own population of northern white rhinos using surrogate mothers from another white rhino subspecies with the use of conserved sperm samples from male northern white rhinos before their deaths. Even if it sounds like something from science fiction, the process is actually extremely genuine, if still in an experimental stage. Beginning modestly, the researchers took eggs from one of the last remaining females and fertilized them using sperm from their preserve. Now that they appear to have produced embryos successfully, finding the right surrogate mother is the only thing left to do. For a squad that has never performed anything like before, this is practically no sparies for error, which puts a lot of pressure on them. However, if all goes as planned, it wouldn't be irrational to hope for a resurgence of the northern white rhino population. It would eventually reduce to a simple issue of multiplication. It will be fun to actually see if all this effort pays off in any way. Number 4. The Huia Cloning of the extinct Huia bird had finally been approved. It always sounds like science fiction of some sort, but after scientists and ethicists met in July 1999 in New Zealand, the conclusion was drawn. And they have determined that efforts to revive the extinct Hoya bird through cloning should begin immediately. The effort was referred to as flagship research and exciting cutting-edge science of international significance by Professor of Molecular Biology Diana Hill, who has also looked into the cloning of the moa, another extinct bird. A cloned Huya is probably a few years away according to Hill's warning about technical obstacles. The initiative got its start when Hastings Boys High School students in New Zealand questioned whether their school's extinct Huya could be brought back to life. They conducted research, gathered speakers, and planned a conference. Students, Maori representatives, scientists, and moral experts gathered on July 9th through 10th to talk about the Huya's technical viability and moral acceptability. A restorative justice defense of the morality of cloning the Huya said that since the Huya suffered loss as a result of human action, man now has a responsibility to make up for that loss. 
Supporters of cloning claim that it demonstrates how technology can correct mistakes that people have made in the past. There were several arguments raised against the cloning effort, including the idea that man shouldn't take the role of God, that the money would be better used elsewhere, and the Huya's overspecialization made it possible for them to exist. A cloned Huya, so the argument goes, wouldn't be authentic and might not be able to thrive in the wild. Supporters of cloning actually won, and I guess we all know what comes next. Number 3. Dinosaurs Okay, first off, it simply doesn't make sense that blood-sucking insects preserved in amber would carry complete dinosaur DNA. There have been discovered prehistoric mosquitoes of with blood from dinosaurs, although any dinosaur DNA has long since decayed. The oldest DNA that has ever been discovered is approximately 1 million years old, but to find dino DNA, scientists would need to travel back at least 66 million years, so practically, they're not even close. Second, even if they were able to extract dinosaur DNA, it would be broken up into countless numbers of microscopic fragments, and they wouldn't have any clue as to how they should be arranged. It would be comparable to attempting to complete the most difficult jigsaw puzzle without knowledge of the image or the presence of any missing pieces. However, in Jurassic Park, the scientists fill in these gaps with frog DNA, but this wouldn't produce a dinosaur. Rather, it would produce a hybrid animal that is known as frogosaur. These frog DNA snippets might harm the growing embryo in a variety of ways. Additionally, since birds and frogs are more closely related, using bird DNA instead of frog DNA would make vastly more sense, albeit it still wouldn't work. Number 2. The Christmas Island Rat It was stated that Tom Gilbert would not bring back dinosaurs, woolly mammoths, or any other extinct megafauna formerly roamed the earth if he had the ability to do so. The Christmas Island Rat, a species that was eradicated from its island home in the Indian Ocean more than a century ago, is his more modest pick. Gilbert, an evolutionary geneticist at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, acknowledged that his choice might not be the most exciting, but he said that it is probably the most doable given to the state of gene editing technology at the moment. He and his colleagues looked at the obstacles now standing in the way of de-extinction in a paper that was released in the journal Current Biology. The study poses difficult considerations regarding the viability of de-extinction attempts, the appropriate animal species to be reintroduced, and the moral complexities associated with tampering with nature. Gilbert and his associates began by sequencing the genome of the Christmas Island rat and they discovered that they were able to retrieve nearly all of the genetic data from the rodent. According to the findings, the extinct mammal is also closely connected to a species of the living rats because it shares almost 95% of its DNA with the Norway brown rat. Nearly 5% of the genome of the Christmas Island rat could not be recovered, despite the fact that practically all of it could be, according to the study. The researchers came to the conclusion that the missing genes were involved in the immune system, and olfaction or the rat's senses smell. Number 1. California Condor These are massive, ancient creatures called California condors. Since the Pleistocene age, the birds have largely not changed, living long after the mastodons whose carcasses they previously consumed were reduced to museum exhibits. Once, mighty condors flew about the edge of extinction. The 1,000th California condor chick has been born since a large recovery program was launched more than three decades ago, and officials are now celebrating this once unimaginable milestone, though it wasn't always the case. The Condor Recovery Initiative is now frequently the subject of positive headlines praising the new chicks. It was radical once. The 1976 recovery idea required catching the birds in the wild, where they had lived for tens of thousands of years, and then making an attempt to breed them in zoos. If the attempts were successful, they would eventually be restored to their natural habitats in California. Many questioned if enormous birds raised in zoos would ever be able to effectively readapt to the wild. Strong conservationists and wilderness advocates were among those who preferred that great condors go extinct over spending even a short time in zoos. The ecological community engaged in intramural conflict as factions disagreed on whether humans should be inhibit of the gradual process of natural selection. That's about it for today's video on 20 extinct animals scientists are going to revive. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share it with your friends, so that both you and they can see more interesting videos like this. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.